people always ask, what could be a therapy where we have failed pills, where we have failed vacuum erection device, where we have failed all kinds of attempts and are now at a refractory erectile dysfunction. That's a common scenario in men uh, with many indications right now. And one needs to be aware that not always will a pill or a vacuum erection device or intracavernosal medication work. That means there's a progressive cascade of changes happening in the male organ, as a result of which the possibility of him not being capable anymore with erections is a high probability in certain disease states in certain kind of indications. So who needs the penile processes? The question that has been asked by men across who probably have not got the right effect or the kind of effect that they have been aiming for. Let's look into those indications. Number one, long-standing diabetes mellitus. Diabetes mellitus is a systemic disease, a disease where you keep checking your blood sugar levels and attempt to be in the parameter of discipline or the blood sugar levels being well-maintained with your diet, with your exercise, with your medications and with insulin. But remember, the change is happening in various organs. Organs like the eyes, like the kidneys, like the urinary bladder, like the bowel are all undergoing a continuum of change. While these changes happen, they also happens in those micro vessels and the nerves. What we call as a neuropathy and a microangiopathy hits end organs and end organs are necessarily eyes and then all end organs are the shaft of penis. Men with long-standing diabetes, men with uncontrolled diabetes land up with a situation which is refractory erectile dysfunction. They land up with a progression or a stage migration where the medications don't work, where any conservative management doesn't work and they present with completely refractory erectile dysfunction. They have no early morning erections. They have no spontaneous or stimulated erections and therefore they're completely incapable. So diabetes mellitus being a systemic disease, bringing about microangiopathy, bringing about the neuropathy, which in the end organ can bring about complete changes where the sensations, the capability, the erectile process has all gone into a different mode where you cannot achieve one. That's where a penile processes of a malleable or inflatable kind scores a point. It brings a treatment and a cure for all diabetics who are suffering from erectile dysfunction and don't know where to go to. Their medications don't work or they work only partly. They're not good enough, but they just want to continue. So these indications are extremely strong. And today, as we grow and grow in diabetes, in terms of lifestyle phenomena and lifestyle changes, as India catches up to become the diabetes capital of the world, more and more mature and capable men in their uh, most mature years could have this trouble around. So that's something which we need to wake up, number one. Number two, cardiovascular diseases. Cardiovascular diseases leading to atherosclerosis, leading to changes in the vessels, in the pelvic vessels, decreases the flow to those levels around where the blood flow goes down dramatically. As the blood flow sequentially dramatically goes down in the pelvic vessels, the pelvic vessels get thrombosed. The vessels in the penile shaft also get thrombosed. When they talk about penile shaft is a barometer of man's health. If a man doesn't get an erection in his more mature years and he has a cardiovascular disease, he's taking the blood pressure medications called antihypertensives. He's on a host of medications for his cardiovascular phenomenon. That means the attempts to improve the pressure and stabilize the pressure, the changes of the effect happening on the medications are all a cascade effect, an effect which probably doesn't reverse. Men with prolonged cardiovascular diseases could have erectile dysfunction where uh, sildenafil and tadalafil may not work anymore. They will also be at the same time aging gracefully and be losing erections. So these are individuals with cardiovascular diseases who deserve a permanent cure and for them penile processes and indication. Let's look at people who are gracefully aging in their late 40s to 80s and they still want an erection which gives them a man's thing. And that possibly is not happening because the erectile process is also grazing and gradually changing its age. As a result of which the erectile process goes down. So many men who otherwise idiopathically having erectile dysfunction to the point that they don't get an erection anymore need to be looked into and be given a penile processes as a cure, making them confident after having counseled and made them capable by a surgeon. Radical prostatectomy. Robotic radical prostatectomy is something which I do for localized uh, prostate cancer. In prostate cancer, where the disease is localized, a urologist, a genital urinary surgeon would remove the prostate in such a way that he would spare the nerves, but go close to the continuous mechanism and finally clear the cancer. The cancer is completely clear. The margins get negative. He continues to do well in his urinary control and is good enough. But the erectile process may not return. Many a times, the disease process could be involving the nerves. The disease process could be beyond the prostatic capsule. And that kind of a radical approach where the nerves can't be spared 
makes the reptile process, which was already gradually going down in his late 50s to 70s, worsen completely. He develops a new onset erectile dysfunction from a coexisting erectile function, which was not the best. In other words, post-radical robotic prostatectomy, I get to see patients from the entire country who have got erectile failure, who are completely refractory to any kind of a therapy which helps their penile rehabilitation, but in fact doesn't help. So the penile rehabilitation does not help. In a case of an individual who has got erectile failure, he deserves a penile processes. We have people who undergo, sadly, those major road traffic accidents where the urinary passage and the organs get injured in the pelvis. Patients undergo urethroplasty, something which I continue to do as anastomotic urethroplasty for posterior urethral injuries where there was fracture of pelvis, you had a massive injury and the injury led to urinary changes and therefore the urethra was not functional. Later on, we did a urethroplasty and he got well. The urinary flow is very good. He passes urine very well but the erectile process is completely gone. It's went because of the crush injury, because of the damages, because of fibrosis, the nerves getting involved and the cavernous nerves never had a chance to recover back because of the entrapment, because of the injuries. Such patients who have developed road traffic accidents, have fracture pelvis, develop a neurological injury, a vascular injury, and direct injury to the nerves. These patients never develop erectile function. These patients do best as a result of a penile processes. The penile processes gives them the cure, gives them the erection and the very much needed confidence that they're missing around. Patients who have got spinal injuries, who have got spinal surgeries and who've got spine issues where there is a neurological change happening. And this neurological change which brings about changes in the urinary aspect, could changes in the bowel, could also bring about a progressive, sad, complete change in their capability of erection and these patients don't get erections anymore. So a spinal changes of that kind would develop erectile failure completely and would deserve a penile processes. There are individuals who land up with a disease called Peyronie's disease. Peyronie's disease or a curvature of the shaft of penis, where the erectile process can be maintained as a result of which they find that there's a curvature when they get erect, but in the non-erect conditions, the shaft is otherwise smooth. They may be a lumpy, bumpy shaft as a result of the corporal fibrosis and the plaques that develop. A urologist would assess them on two different aspects. One is a capability of erection, which many of them have in the early days. Their pain resolved and the disease matured for them to get their penis straightened up because they have an erection. And many of them who develop shrinkage of the shaft, many of them who say that I've lost complete erections as a result of the Peyronie's disease, deserve a cure and their capability back by a corporoplasty and a penile process. The so corporoplasty is to repair the corporal bodies and make them straight. At the same time, straightening alone, alone may not work in those patients who have also got erectile failure. So Peyronie's disease either would require only a corporoplasty and a repair, or on the other side, would require a corporoplasty with the penile processes, which could bring them a man again. Patients who are grossly obese, who find their organs quite shrunken and deep inside, and sadly cannot find a location and a time to be able to perform just because the organs are too hidden and concealed, Erectile process is gradually getting failed because of obesity, atherosclerosis, and aspects which are actually adding to the conglomerate of comorbidities deserve to be treated and cured. And they deserve a penile processes. And finally, acute ischemic priapism attempts to get a erection which has gone overboard where somebody develops priapism on a retile issue which lasts more than four hours where the blood becomes a sludge and these patients don't have a chance of recovery because there's a fibrosis which has developed. The best would have been had they come in within four hours of the erection, which was persistent, painful, and obviously not gratifying them. Priapism is all about a prolonged erection which has happened beyond four hours where the penile shaft is not getting due to descent, not getting softer, and the erection process continues. This can happen if you overdose yourself with pills or with an erectile process which got maintained for a longer period of time. Such patients with priapism deserve an emergency therapy by a urologist, by an endologist. If they've come late after two, three, four days, it happens that the organ has undergone a fibrosis, the blood has become a sludge, and such patients need to be repositioned back in their life with the organ, which would then require a cure by a penile processes. Friends, penile processes happens to be a cure for refractory erectile disorders of the list that we have listed, right? From the age to diabetes, to cardiovascular diseases, to post-robotic radical prostatectomy, to various spinal issues and spinal injuries, to patients who have got Peyronie's disease, to patients who have got gross obesity and obesity failures, patients who had fracture pelvis, urethral injuries, pelvic fractures, and then never recovered, 
and patients have got neurological diseases where there is no effect of the pills or vacuum erection device are patients who deserve a penile processes. A penile processes is inserted into your shaft as either a malleable processes or a inflatable processes. Now, these processes which we inflate actually brings about an endurance to the organ where the organ never grows old. You may gracefully age, but the organ stays capable because these are wonderful machines which have been tested and tested over years and decades to now being available for an andrologist, for a urologist to implant. While I continue implanting these in men who come with refractory erectile failure, their medical therapy where patients and partners participation where various conservative measures don't work. It is important for us to make the audience aware, men aware that they deserve the best. The best may not happen if there's a shame. It's a man's thing. It's a man's thing which probably has been missed out because of the hush-hush of the issue that they go through and the cure is around the corner. For individuals who have had erectile failure to a point in time that they have lived in shame and agony and not known what to do. It's time for them to wake up. The kind of processes available today which have stood test of time in the country and which has repaired men have got them back their capability and positioned them well and capable compared to what they are. It's time to wake up to these indications. For patients who have got refractory uncontrolled diabetes, patients who have got diabetes for a very long time, patients who don't get any more early morning erections, patients who are completely failure in the bed and their erectile process has gone, while the diabetes is very well maintained, happen to be a large chunk of patients who we, we come to see. We see patients who undergone rabid, a radical robotic prostatectomy, and that's a very large chunk of patients who are still young. They had a cancer which was hormone sensitive, but which could still be localized and could be cured by the wonderful radical robotic approach that we apply for such patients. But if they don't get a erectile process back, they still have hope. So hope is around the corner for people who have no cure. And that cure is what we're aiming for. The awareness drive today is for all men who undergo this erectile failure, fail erections, and continue to live in agony and shame. For a large subset of individuals, uh, we treat them medically. I get to see such patients Monday to Saturday and they come from all over. They are treated with an attempt on a combination therapy on understanding their problems and all these indications that we did talk about, which brings about erectile failure, is not uncommon in today's stressful world. The stress has taken a toll and it's important for us to wake up to this in 2022. For all men who undergo erectile failure, it's time to get repaired and get cleared completely. So wish you good luck and get it sorted.